Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 897 of Screw the Commute podcast. Today, we're going to talk about seven ways to alienate a super affiliate, <laughs> okay? Now, this is kind of opposite of my book, JV, or Joint Venture, JV, How to Be in Front of a Million Warm Prospects in the Next 90 Days, where you can find that on Amazon Kindle, you can find it on Audible, or you can go directly to screwthecommute.com slash JV and get get a copy of it. But this is going to be the opposite <laughs> of, of uh, ways to attract super affiliates. Now, this is how you alienate them. <laughs> Right. Hope you didn't miss episode 896. That was nine ways to lose a customer. So I put these kind of together. You can lose customers and you can lose super affiliates willing to promote you and put you on the map by doing these dumb things. <laughs> okay. So uh, anytime you want to get to a back episode, you go to screwthecommute.com slash and then the episode number that was 896 was nine ways to lose a customer. Today is not 897, seven ways to alienate a super affiliate. Uh, let's see. Uh, make sure you grab a copy of our automation ebook at screwthecommute.com slash automate free and check out my mentor program at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. Okie doke. Uh, I mean, <laughs> kind of the reason I thought of this is I'm involved in something right now. And uh, I've been promoting, uh, I'm not going to mention names here because I kind of like these guys, but uh been promoting something over, I don't know, the last couple of years for them. And I, I found out uh, one thing that they're doing that uh, could help me and could help them. I mean, <laughs> and they, they wouldn't do it. And they got all butthurt about it when I mentioned it. <laughs> and, you know, the, the good thing about business, you know, and I, I'm not really ragging on them too hard, is you are free to make your own dumb mistakes, you can make them all day long. It's up to you, <laughs> you know, so so I, I've made plenty myself, you know, so that's why I'm not too worried about this. But, but uh, see, when you, uh, you know, they, they just don't understand. I mean, they're successful, but they just don't understand uh, to get to the highest levels what you have to do. And a lot of, a lot of people, I'm not saying these, these people so much, but, but you know, they get some degree of success and then they're, they know all, see all. Hey, I've been doing this 30 years online, 47 years in business. I don't know everything. I don't even claim to even close to knowing everything, even about the internet stuff after 30 years. There's just so, it's so vast. All right. I, I learned how to make a fortune on it. All right. That's what I, I'm, I'm worried about. Um, but they just don't understand that JV partners or super affiliates like myself have lots of options. I mean, at any one time, we got 20 people begging us to promote their products and services. So if you want to be put on the map, if you want the super affiliate to promote you to their sometimes millions of people, mine is about 100,000 uh, in, a, in a niche area, um, you got to play their game. They're not going to play your game. They sweated blood to get where they're at, all right? And so if they make a request that's not unreasonable and also that if you had a brain, a half a brain, you would see, oh, this is a good thing for my people, not something bad, all right? So, yeah, if they were asking for something bad that hurts you, I can see them turning down a request. But if it's something that would be an extra bonus for their people, uh, then it's kind of crazy, kind of dumb to, uh, to turn it down. But anyway, let's get into the five uh, ways, no, seven ways I got to alienate a super affiliate. <laughs> All right. and, and I use the term super affiliate and JV partner and uh, kind of interchangeably uh, because uh, they're, they're people that have blazed a trail before you, are bigger than you, and... Well, I mean, and you can make deals with people the same size as you, too. I mean, that's fine. Any kind of deal that you're helping each other is beautiful. You know, that's, that's a good thing. 
but in most cases, if you're uh, if you haven't blazed any trails, if you have nobody on your list, or if you, even if you have a small list of people, then uh, a super affiliate is somebody way bigger than you that has uh, way more influence than uh, I'll use the term influence here, but it's mostly email, but it can be social media and, and so forth and all those things. So, so here's the uh, five ways. Uh, number one is pick the wrong partner. And what I mean by that is it could be a great, powerful super affiliate, but they may not have the proper people on their list to suit your product or service. And if you try to push your way in uh, and get them to promote you, when and here's what's going to happen. You know, I've had this loads of times. People try to get me to promote stuff, and I did it in the early days. I won't do it anymore because if I promote something that's wrong for my list, I get cussed out in 18 languages and 5,000 people unsubscribe like in a couple hours. <laughs> All right, so, I'm the, you know, people like me are not going to do that. Uh, they're, they, they know the consequences of promoting things that don't make sense for them. So it's, it doesn't behoove you or it's not good for you to try to push yourself into somebody's list that doesn't make sense because if it's a big bomb – they tell all their big list owner friends, and then you're done. <laughs> all right, so so uh, make sure you pick the right uh, partner for what you are promoting. And uh, like I said, I go in depth on how to find figure that out, but uh, on my in the book and so forth. But but anyway, uh, just make sure it makes sense. You know, look at their stuff, see what they promote, see who's on their list, and and what their list is about, and make sure yours lines up. Okay, number two, no sales numbers. And this is what I uh, coin of asking a very powerful person to be your guinea pig, to send out something to their list and promote you with no idea whatsoever if it's going to work or if they're just going to send a big, you know, in my case, 100,000 emails out and then no sales come in. No commissions come to me for it. And you say, well, okay, it was kind of a bust. Well, it was a bust for you because you got nothing to lose. For me and people like me, I've got to replace those people. And it could be worth a dollar or a couple dollars a piece to replace the, the people that unsubscribe because I sent them something stupid. All right. So people like me won't do it. It's too costly for us and uh, no money coming in from a mailing. And you can only do so many mailings before you burn your list. So each one has to be productive. And so if you come to a, a big list owner or a big powerful person with no sales numbers, then you're asking them to be your guinea pig. You didn't do your homework. And you say, well, I don't have, how am I supposed to get sales numbers if I don't have any people on my list? You make deals with smaller list owners. You, uh, you do paid ads to get some numbers. See, if you just come to me and people like me with some numbers, it, it puts you in a different category. In other words, you're not asking us to be your guinea pig. You're showing us that you tried some things and here was the results. That makes us think completely differently about you. So uh, make sure you come with some sales numbers. Uh, number three, no swipe copy. Swipe copy, uh, the, the term swipe, it sounds like you're stealing things, but it's, it's really from the copywriting world where you saw some good copy and you saved it, you know, saved a big file of it, and then you adapted that copy for your product or service. That's perfectly legitimate. Everybody does it. Now, what you do is you create copy and give it to the joint venture person. Sometimes they'll use it as is, just putting their affiliate link in. Now with me, I never do because I know I'm a better copywriter than pretty much anybody that asked me to, to uh, promote something for them. So I adjust it. You know, and I sometimes I get this swipe that's like a mile long. Well, that's, you know, really crazy nowadays, uh, sending massive emails, long, long emails. It's shorter emails leading to a good copy on your sales page. So I pick out the best things that I can out of their swipe 
and adjust them for my audience and throw in some things that I think will help to get them to click over and sign up or do or buy or whatever it is. Okay. So make sure you provide swipe copy. Short, long, uh, give them uh, graphics in different sizes for their social media. I mean, all kinds of stuff like that. That's swipe copy. All right. That was number three. Number four is ask the partner to do work. <laughs> okay. And you think, well, that's only fair. They should do some work. They did their work. What you don't understand is that they did their work sometimes for years and years. Me, in my case, 30 years, seven days a week, selling and helping people and teaching and, uh, you know, this internet stuff. So, so don't ask me to work. You sign up the, the super affiliate for your, your program. You create everything for them. Uh, like I said, the go back to the swipe copy. Don't ask them to work. And don't ask them, no, show up on a call where we can discuss it. No, if they want that, they will ask you, okay? You give them everything they need. Don't ask them to work. All right, that was number four. Number five, and this is the one of the craziest ones. Don't ask them to to buy your product. <laughs> All right, that is just the stupidest thing. If you only knew, we got uh, if there's if it's a physical product, we got stacks of them waiting. The people begging us to leave and look at them. We got digital products and services. People clogging up our inbox, begging us to to uh, promote for them. See, so to ask us to buy your product, I mean, we make fun of you uh, for doing such a thing. I don't care how expensive it is. You send it, all right? Now, here's the thing. It is possible that if we kind of like your product, we don't know you personally, and may, we don't know how reliable you are, we don't know a lot of stuff about you yet, we may buy your product Sarah, uh, with some other name or you know, or assistants or girlfriends or boyfriends or husbands' other name so you don't know it's us just to see what happens. So that's a possibility. But for don't ever make the mistake of making a super affiliate buy your product. You just you're making a fool of yourself. Okay, let's see. Number 6, poor communications. If the super affiliate ask you a question, get back as fast as humanly possible. I I complain about this on idiots putting voicemails like Oh, well, we'll get back to you within 48 hours. No, you won't because you won't need to because I'll be already bought from somebody else. All right, that's stupid. Fast as humanly possible. Uh, good, uh, clear communications. If English isn't your second or first language and you're trying to get an English-speaking super affiliate, then get somebody to look it over first for you that's a, a fluent English speaker, you know, or whatever language you're doing, okay? So... Uh, your communications need to be, and, and, and communicate however they want. They might say, hey, it's better if you text me. Hey, they may set or, uh, say it's better if you message, message me. Maybe some email. You know, so whatever it is, do what they want, not what you're used to. And then, you know, and then some people, if you're not used to using Messenger, you might not check it or even know that they responded to you and then it sits there and then they think, no, I'm not dealing with this person. They don't get back to me fast enough. See, so you have to adjust your ways to suit them. The bottom line is, folks, I'm not saying that these people are arrogant or something. They just beat the path long before you did. And it's up to you to change if you want them to put you on the map. It's not for up to them to change. Okay. All right, and then the last one, number seven, is being difficult to deal with. And I got to tell you, you know, I can tell right away when somebody comes to me, oh, my product's the best there is, and, and you, you got to do it, Tom, if you want to, you, uh, you know, make more money for yourself. You know? And so they're arrogant. Um, I say, well, you know, that percentage is just not commensurate with, you know, what stands are in the industry even not not let alone super affiliates usually command a more a higher percentage of, of affiliate commission uh, no 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 this is it this is what we're doing take it or leave it okay i'm gonna leave it <laughs> all right because you know there's some lady i've known for years out of california 
wonderful, nice lady. I've had her on my podcast and, um, you know, sent me this thing to promote her service that's, and the commission is just pitiful compared to any kind of industry standard online <laughs> as digital products, eh? And not a lot of work. You know, now, if there's a lot of work and physical work involved or physical products to be shipped, yeah, that denotes a smaller commi- you know, uh, commission schedule. But when it's all digital online and you're not doing a damn thing, no. <laughs> If you if you come in with a substandard commission, uh, they're going to laugh at you again, you know, and not promote. Now, I didn't make a big deal or laugh at the lady, but I didn't promote, you know, because it's it's not commensurate. Uh, so anyway, there's seven things. Picking wrong partners, number two, no sales numbers. Number three, no swipe copy. Number four, ask the partner to work. Number five, ask the partner to buy your product. <laughs> Uh, six poor communication, seven is difficult to deal with. So, so there you go. Don't do those things, and uh, uh, but do the opposite of those, and you have a great chance of being in front of a million warm prospects in the next ninety days. I mean, grab my uh, my PDF copy of the book at screwthecommute.com/jv, or if you like Kindle, go on Amazon, or if you like to listen, it's on Audible. All right, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Also, check out my mentor program, and you get all of this stuff, uh, one-on-one training with my, me and my entire staff, as included in the deal. And a bunch of other unique things nobody on earth has. <laughs> all right, I gotta, uh, it's easy for me to say that because nobody has a retreat center where you actually live in the house with them. Nobody uh, gives you one-on-one attention from the principal that's a high level principle. So uh, check it out. Great internet marketing training.com. And I'll catch you on the next episode. See you later.